For most of human history, the difference between a home that lasted a century and one that collapsed in a decade came down to one thing, whether the builders understood how to protect their lumber from decay. Timber strength isn't lost in dramatic moments. There's no single day when a beam suddenly fails. Decay works quietly, cell by cell, feeding on moisture, heat and neglect. Across civilizations, carpenters, architects and engineers didn't just hope their structures would survive. They built with systems specifically designed to fight rot long before modern preservatives existed. And what they figured out still matters today, especially for anyone building off-grid restoring heritage structures or simply trying to keep their materials in good condition in a harsh environment. In this episode of Thermal Vault, we're digging into historic and practical methods for protecting lumber from decay, why they worked, and how you can apply them right now with simple, reliable steps grounded in real history. To understand how past builders approached the problem, we need to start with the fundamental rule they respected. Decay only thrives when moisture stays in the wood long enough for fungi to colonise it. That means the first line of defence was never a coating or a chemical. It was an understanding of moisture behaviour and airflow. Across Asia, Europe and the Americas, builders relied on seasoning timber before construction. Instead of cutting a tree and using it immediately, they allowed lumber to dry slowly and evenly in shaded, ventilated spaces. Seasoning wasn't an optional step. It was structural insurance. Freshly cut wood contains too much internal moisture, and if used prematurely, it almost guarantees biological decay. Even today, if someone is building a shed, cabin or workshop in a remote environment, the same rule applies. A simple method is to stack lumber off the ground using stones or cinder blocks, create narrow gaps between each board, and keep the stack under a roof or tarp that allows air movement but blocks direct rain. Leave it long enough for the internal moisture to stabilise. This single step can extend the life of your structure dramatically. Another critical historic technique was, well, elevating timber away from soil contact. Builders everywhere, from Roman engineers to Japanese temple carpenters, knew that the ground is the most aggressive source of moisture. That's why major timber structures rarely sat directly on earth. Japanese temples rested on carefully carved stone footings, allowing air to circulate under beams while blocking capillary rise. Medieval European barns used stone plinths or masonry pads for the exact same reason. Now, these weren't just decorative choices, you know, they were actually moisture management systems. Anyone constructing a modern off-grid cabin can, well, apply this immediately. Instead of placing posts directly into the soil, set them on compacted gravel topped with flat stones or precast concrete piers. If you must embed wood, char the buried section using controlled heat until it forms a protective carbon layer, a technique used in Scandinavia, Eastern Europe and, um, parts of Asia. Charred wood resists microorganisms, slows moisture absorption and can significantly delay decay in earth contact situations. 
You know, the way historic builders handled joinery also played a major role in preventing rot. Before metal fasteners were common, joints were crafted so they shed water naturally rather than trap it. Mortise and tenon connections, scarf joints and lap joints were shaped with sloped shoulders and channels so that rain couldn't sit inside them. Carpenter guilds in Germany perfected roof framing specifically to eliminate pockets where water could linger against the grain. If you're working with exterior timber today, you can adapt this approach by avoiding flat horizontal surfaces. Even slight bevels or chamfers on exposed ends help water run off instead of soaking inward. When building doors, window frames or overhangs, the principle is simple. Water must never have a place to rest. Historic surface treatments also played a major role in protecting lumber. Long before industrial preservatives, people used natural oils, resins and mineral washes that penetrated deep into wood fibres. The Vikings treated ship timbers with pine tar heated until it flowed into the grain. Rural European builders used boiled linseed oil mixed with mineral pigments to seal exposed structural members. In Japan, artisans applied urushi lacquer derived from the sap of urushi trees, which hardened into a moisture-resistant shell. These treatments all worked on the same principle. Fill the wood pores with something that displaces water and hardens into a moisture-resistant barrier. Today, someone wanting a historically grounded protective finish can mimic these methods safely by applying raw or boiled linseed oil in thin coats, allowing each layer to absorb and cure before adding the next. On exterior beams or wooden siding, this creates a warm protective seal that slows moisture penetration without relying on synthetic coatings. Ventilation strategies also reveal how deeply historic builders understood moisture dynamics. In traditional Middle Eastern and Mediterranean homes, wooden ceiling beams lasted centuries because the buildings were designed to prevent interior humidity from settling. Courtyard ventilation, high ceilings and cross-draft corridors allowed moisture to escape rather than collect in timber pockets. The same principle appears in North American log cabins, where generous roof overhangs protected walls, not just from rain, but from humidity building up in the joints. Anyone with a modern workshop, greenhouse or storage shed can apply this by ensuring that air can move freely across structural components. Installing simple vents, leaving gaps under eaves and preventing dead air pockets around major beams keeps timber dry even in humid climates. Another overlooked strategy comes from regions where builders intentionally used wood species resilient to decay. Not all lumber behaves the same, you know. Ancient cultures really prized cedar, cypress, oak and larch because of their natural chemical defences against fungi and insects. Some communities actually used a mixed species foundation approach, placing durable wood at the base with lighter wood above. When selecting lumber today, especially for ground-adjacent or weather-exposed elements, 
Choosing species with known resistance can significantly reduce long-term decay. Even if these species are, well, a bit expensive or limited in availability, using them strategically, like for sill plates, corner posts, or roof edge elements, creates a reliable protective foundation for the rest of the structure. Ultimately, everything historic builders did returns to a single principle, and that is to protect wood by controlling its relationship with moisture. Drying, elevating, draining, sealing, ventilating, and choosing the right species were not random traditions, but rather they were engineered systems based on centuries of trial and error. The practical examples still work because, well, the physics hasn't changed. Wood still decays for the same reasons, and it still survives when those reasons are eliminated. If this deep dive into timber protection gave you new respect for historical craftsmanship and perhaps some practical ideas you can apply today, make sure you subscribe to Thermal Vault share this guide and help keep this knowledge alive for everyone serious about long-lasting construction.